Welcome back to another podcast episode where we help aspiring developers get jobs and junior developers grow. In this episode, we are going to be reviewing Code Chrysalis, a coding bootcamp in Japan. Um, we're going to dig more into it, but like usual, it's nothing but honest and transparent reviews. I'm not here to sell the programs. I'm just here to get down into the real reviews. So we'll go ahead and start with our intros like normal. Yukimi, would you like to... You know what? Uh, a couple questions. Yes. Are you currently a software engineer? Or are you still applying? Yes, yes, yes. I, I am. Um, I am um, since uh, last December, December 1st. Okay, cool. Yes. Well, congrats. That's cool. Thank you. Um, what, uh, where do you come from? What was your old industry? Oh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm Japanese. And uh, when I was a student, I studied fine art in New York. So that is why I speak a little bit English. And, uh, but uh, after I came back, I, I did my master's in uh, at art, but, uh, you know, it's hard to make money. Okay, so fair enough. After I came back to Japan, I was uh, working in several com companies and doing uh, just administrators. And uh, I didn't like my job for a long time, but uh, I didn't uh, think seriously changing, uh, get new skill and uh, become uh, changing my job until pandemic happens. Mm, yeah. yeah, pandemic make, made me seriously my future, my career. So that is why I started running coding. Okay. But, uh, yeah, first time I studied by myself, but uh, I didn't understand at all. <laughs> so I started to look for school and I found code prisoners. Okay, that's awesome. Well, you got your new position. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. How about you, Michael? Right as you're taking a sip. Oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's a morning after. Oh yeah, join me. Um, let's see. Oh, what was the question? Just a quick introduction. Or... Well, yeah. Let's actually go. Um, when did you graduate? Um, are you still in the job market? And then where did you come from? Okay. Yeah. So I graduated in the middle of last June, and I'm no longer in the job market. I actually have a a different job now. Is like. <clears throat> doing more it stuff like uh, it support um so i wouldn't consider myself like any longer in the i guess web dev software engineering job market um i pretty much uh left the job hunt i guess you could say um and before that i was doing english teaching i was what's called an alt like assistant language teacher uh in japanese public schools in a kind of rural area about four hours away from where i live now <clears throat> in yokohama i live in yokohama now but i was living in a, a gifu before um and i think you know if, if people who are watching this who are living in japan and making a living in japan um they're probably doing it through english and they're probably like experiencing this feeling of dead endness and they're kind of looking for like all right uh, how am I going to move out of English, either in Japan or when I leave Japan? And that's kind of where I was at. Um, I'm I'm still on the fence, but I'm pretty sure like Japan isn't going to be my forever home. That might change because currently I'm not really sure where else to go. But my idea was, um, okay, I should have some kind of a skill that I can use anywhere in the world, wherever I decide to go. And I'd heard about coding and I guess the, the concept that you could make money off of websites and the internet, uh, like web development, this kind of thing. I think that whole idea kind of, um, I learned about that about maybe seven, eight years ago and, you know, learned about free code camp. So this has always been kicking around in the back of my mind for all these years. Um, and so, yeah, I was doing English before uh, I started Code Chrysalis. And during that time, my goal was just to pay off my student loans, just keep my head down and pay off my loans so I could get debt free. And then I saved up uh, to make that next step through uh, Code Chrysalis. So that's kind of where I was coming at it from. Okay. But yeah, 
uh, I guess I'd say it didn't really work out for me, um, which is something I'd really like to talk about because, you know, you mentioned reviews and in my cohort, I, I think there was a 17 students and most all of us probably mm, maybe 14 of us have jobs right now uh, after we all finished last June. Um, but my understanding is, is that Code Chrysalis doesn't invite you to give a review until after you've secured a job. Um, mm. So, for example, like those of us who never got a job, like we never got um, like an invite or like, hey, could you leave a review now? I think they when they ask you to leave a review, it's kind of like after everything is done, you got a job and good to go. But um, if you don't have a job, I from my understanding from what i've seen they don't invite i guess quote unquote i won't say that but uh, they don't invite people who have left the job hunt and who have pretty much moved on from code chrysalis to leave a review is my understanding that's a really good point i um i've talked about this many times there are many kind of sneaky ways programs it's like it's it's okay to get a negative review it's it's like every company is so scared of that transparency and that's that's an interesting that's an interesting way i don't actually think i've heard of uh programs delaying reviews like that but there are many other ways that programs do that um okay cool we'll dig into that a bit um how about you francis well first thank you for having me uh, my name is francis i'm from canada but i've been living in japan for quite some time uh, and it's funny that uh, I've, I have a similar background than Michael. I was also an English teacher in Japan. and uh, But the difference is Japan will be my forever home. So that's why I kind of, like, again, the dead end job. So you wanted to find something that has a better, better prospect. But actually me, programming was just a hobby before. I was doing it because I wanted to learn how to make automated tests. So I learned Python for fun. I mean, I'd like test like English test, like I could make questions and the students can't cheat on each other, things like this anyway. So I, I started doing things with this, but I never thought I could have a career because I thought I could you have to do like a CS degree to go into the market because the people that I knew. And so that's why. And then I did some like volunteering like last year and I kind of discovered through this that booth camp were a thing and i that's how i joined code chrysalis i think i jumped the gun but i'm uh, i i worked as a teacher in japan but back home i worked in a bank because i studied business administration anyway i'm going back and forth but uh, yeah so okay. uh, yeah yeah something like this yeah what are you doing right now i'm a, a front-end developer front end developer okay i have a question for all of you so i think so okay here's an assumption correct me if i'm wrong do a lot of american uh people move to japan and become an english sort of teacher to yeah okay. yeah that's the question I, i'm not american easy. but uh, yeah it's easier yeah it's like easier. this or like the military i feel those are the two like big americans that i meet in japan okay um yeah i I'd, I'd say so too it's, it's easier to i guess quote unquote get your foot in the door like it's easy to find a company that's willing to sponsor your visa and i think that's kind of the key thing you need to have someone to mm. sponsor your visa to get into the country and then once you have an english teaching job it's relatively it, it's not um a huge ordeal to jump companies or to locate to a new city and uh find a different company to continue renewing your visa okay so i think All that's right. kind of the game yeah that's interesting do you feel like japan values traditional education like a college degree over something like a coding boot camp or is it vice versa Man, and anyone can a... talk by the way oh yeah sorry i don't wanna you're fine but yeah, you might as well go, Michael. Start yeah, sorry. Um, I, I guess, you know, uh, coding and I guess web development is a relatively like young industry. So I think, um, I, I don't think like maybe traditional ideas of like, you know, getting a university education for web development. I don't think that's like quite taken root yet, or maybe if it even ever will. Um, 
I guess it all comes down to like how the companies treat mm. uh, graduates. You know, if a tech company really cares that you have a kind of university degree, then that might factor into it. Um, from, from things I've seen and heard on YouTube and stuff, I don't really have any evidence other than that to believe this, but Japan seems to value computer science degrees. Like, so if, if you have a CS degree, if you have a candidate with a CS degree and one who doesn't, like, they'll probably tend to favor the one with a CS degree. But again, I think it just depends on the company, which is probably a similar situation anywhere in the world, at least in this industry, I believe. I'm not sure, though. Yeah. And it really comes down to, well, obviously, like who can do the job, who's a cultural fit, but also, yeah, it's usually going to only help you, but is it worth the money? That's usually like the main question in the software engineering uh, industry. Yeah. Um, actually, a uh, quick question. Yukimi, uh, did you yes. find a software engineering job after the coding bootcamp? Yes, 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 yes. Like, uh, so I graduated... October 22nd and uh, I immediately start look for a job and uh, I got uh, four or five interview then I started work as a front-end web developer December 1st I think oh. it was very first and uh, I think I got uh, a lot of job interview you didn't update your LinkedIn um, not yet, because oh. I'm still, uh, how to say, like uh, three months. Um, I forgot the English word. Trial period? Yeah, yeah, yeah something like, uh, like uh, yeah. It's okay. not like uh, fully engaged yet. That makes sense. Okay. I'll mm -hmm. probably poke and prod with questions like that, because I'm interested in hearing just like web development, like different cultures. So. Mm hmm Okay, cool. Um, so I guess you, I guess I kind of want to start with this. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Um, what is your favorite thing about the program? Um, I'll chime in. I mean, my favorite thing was the, I mean, the tech stack that they're teaching. And I mean, two, I guess. And the other one that really got me to choose it was the i mean the the teaching method because they what they do is that a lot of the lessons and things they're more about you figure it out yourself type of thing they give you tools and then you try to struggle on your own which is i feel very reflective of the real like development job is some you're home and you're scratching your head and you doubt yourself but that's i think that's what they were teaching. So that's why I thought ah, if that's actually the case, I think it'll be good. Cause uh, yeah. So that's the positive for me. So would, um, would that mean people? So what happens when you get stuck for like a half an hour or an hour and you just cannot get past it? Do you have that help? Yeah. There's instructors that you can always ask for help. Uh, that's something we can come back later on instructors, but yeah. Uh. Okay. Sounds good. What about you two favorite thing? Yeah, no, you don't um, just talk, Yuki. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think uh, the best thing is they, a lot of bootcamp teaches uh, Ruby, but uh, Code Chrysalis teaches JavaScript, which is really good. I think many bootcamp teaches Ruby because uh, of uh, uh, Ruby on Rail is uh, very easy and first to make a web app. But uh, I tried to study Ruby and Rails a little bit, but I think very it is very easy and first to make web app, but they make a lot of file, so it was very difficult to fix program because they make files, a lot of files. A lot of files to manage? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, but uh, I think... Uh, yeah, and uh, I think uh, Ruby on Rails and a little bit old. So, yeah, I I think it's better to study JavaScript because JavaScript, they use uh, like React, Vue. Those are more modern than Ruby on Rails. 
Yeah, I noticed that with international education, I saw a lot of Ruby on Rails. And um, it feels like, uh, what was it? Uh, La Wagoon had, I think, a Ruby on Rails curriculum. And it felt very much focused on, like like you said, you can get an app up and running easily. It's easy mm-hmm. to learn. You can get it up easily. And it yeah, felt, yeah. It, I think that's good for entrepreneurs that want to launch an app. I feel like it is, especially, and then you find coding boot camps will focus on like product management, a little bit of design, UX, and you're like, they're kind of training people to build their own apps, which is... Mm. Which is pretty cool with the Ruby on Rails, right? But when you do get into JavaScript, would you say JavaScript is very um, well desired in the market in web development? Completely. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Perfect. I mean, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, okay. Interesting. I agree with everything you said about Ruby on Rails. Michael, how about you? What's your favorite thing? Um. It probably has more to do with like the non-technical aspects of the boot camp. Um, I, I personally have some, I don't know what to call them, misgivings or maybe hmm, thoughts about like how things were taught in the curriculum. Um, we'll go over that. Don't worry. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, it has a lot to do with the people. Like I think the a lot of the people working at Code Chrysalis are really, um, you know, they're really kind. I think they really believe in their mission. Um, and What's their mission? That I, was, uh, I think their mission is to, through you know, positivity and uh, encouragement and uh, as much support as they can give, is to um, help people make a change in their careers and their lives for the positive. Um, yeah, I guess that'd probably be my one-liner off the top of my head. Um Yeah, like there was one thing about the program that I was kind of surprised about that I'm not sure if it's quite advertised on the site, but when you get in the program, you know, they're telling you about, you know, uh, you know, these are the kind of things we do and these are the things that are available to you. Um, I don't know if she's still there, but they have someone who's pretty much she's like a life coach. And her, and I think she also functions as kind of like the HR person, maybe. Uh, I can't remember exactly like what her technical role title might be. But the point of this person is that for people who are struggling like mentally or emotionally, or there is like kind of maybe some kind of human conflict that comes up in the program, she's there to kind of act as like a mediator in those kinds of things. And you can also arrange to have like a private meeting with her, like 30 minutes um, once a week to just kind of like vent out, you know, what's going on in your head and to talk about it. And um, yeah, like she's, she's not like a counselor or a therapist or anything, but she's just kind of there to like someone who has nothing to do with the curriculum, nothing to do with the program, just kind of like this objective outside third person who will, uh, listen to you and listen to your concerns and things that are going on in your head. Um, and, you know, to just uh, help support you and um, I guess inject uh, positivity and um, yeah, positivity, support, help you along, listen to you uh, and to give you suggestions. And, you know, yeah, like if there's something you want to bring up to maybe <clears throat> anyone else, like the administrator, the administration or, another student or something like she's kind of there to facilitate that and be that kind of buffer. So um, for me, of all the things that Code Chrysalis lets you do and experience, which are also really great. um, I think for me personally, that was probably the best thing out of that program, I think. Okay. It feels like, and you know, sometimes um, I can only pick three people to come on, but you know, I, I get messages and feedback from everyone else. And um it feels like like the support, the positivity, the culture seemed to generally be positive. It seemed to generally be open, supporting. That's the that's the feeling I got. But also, I want to dive into um, Michael. You kind of like hinted more at like the curriculum and how things are are taught. You want to expand on that? You seemed a little concerned. Yeah. Um, so of course, you know, this is just my my personal mindset and my viewpoint. So. Um, I don't want, 
you know, anyone watching this, I don't want that to project onto, for example, Yukimi or Francis, like just because I'm saying this doesn't mean this is what they think or anyone else. Um, but my feeling was, well, I guess this kind of ties into like a, how do you learn kind of a question, like you as an individual, like what learning style or teaching style is best for you. Um, and I guess it kind of, it's the, I think that's kind of a deep question. It probably goes back to like how you went through your educational system, you know, even university and what kind of assumptions did you have about those institutions and about what was supposed to happen when you go through those institutions. And then if you're approaching Code Chrysalis from this mindset, you're probably expecting, you probably have a similar mindset to, you know, previous educational experiences. So in my case with, uh, you know, Code Chrysalis and Web Dev, I've been, you know, on YouTube forever, just like watching all these videos. There's all these like YouTube channels and podcasts and stuff about, you know, web dev and what technologies are good to learn, which ones. Yeah. Right. Um, like I'm sure that, you know, if, if your podcast, this is a still relatively new podcast, isn't it? Like about a year, year year year, like Like if this, if your podcast had been around like two or three years ago, I'm sure I would have stumbled upon it been listening to it and eating all this stuff up. Anyways, uh, I'm starting to like float around, but, um, so yeah, you, depending on how you look at it, it's a positive, but to me, I kind of see it as a negative is that at Code Chrysalis, you know, they, they do teach you foundational things, but I like, at least in my cohort, and that's another thing in my cohort, I feel like things in the program and curriculum get tweaked and changed and instructors even change, you know, from a cohort to cohort basis. Like my experience isn't going to be 100% in line with probably Yukimi's or Francis's. Um, they can probably chime in with like maybe things that were done differently in their cohort. But I think overall the curriculum involves, you know, teaching fundamentals. Well, I guess that's another thing too. Even before you get to the boot camp, you still have to do a ton of pre coursework that's still pretty intensive before they even let you in the door. So um, there's a lot of this kind of foundation fundamentals building and then like as you get further and further in the program they kind of like loosen things up they kind of loosen the seat belt on you and eventually they just kind of unbuckle you and uh, you can just do anything you want which is you know kind of um, a positive thing there's a lot of freedom in what they allow you to do but like in my case i'd had it made up in my mind that i was probably going to go back to the states where I had heard that, you know, the React tech stack or a tech stack that utilizes React was more um, popular. For whatever reason, I just decided in my mind, all right, there's all these kinds of web technologies floating around. You could do this, you can do that. I'm going to focus on React. Um, and so I guess, even though I didn't consciously think this, when I was going into the program, I was wanting to focus on React. And they do go over React, but then they also go over Vue. Um, so they kind of go back and forth with a lot of different technologies, you know, database, uh, database technologies, API technologies, um, front end technologies and frameworks. They're, they're introducing like so many different things to do the same thing to you. And maybe the idea is like, hey, there's this one and there's also this one, there's options. But for me, it was a little too unfocused. Now, as the program goes along, I'd say the first half of the program is more structured in terms of the lectures. Like you usually have a lecture and you usually have a clear homework assignment, but I'd say like the latter half of the program is a lot more free form in that you're doing a lot more group work and the projects get more and more free form. Like your first group project has a lot of I guess, constraints or um, parameters, you know, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're working with. And then through each different group, there's more freedom given to you all to decide within the group, what technologies to use. And so uh, again, like Francis was saying, it's probably a little more realistic, you know, where you're in a group and everyone has some kind of input. Um, but for me, I found myself kind of 
tripping and falling along back in the first half of the program. There were a lot of concepts that I just didn't understand and things that didn't click with me. Uh, meanwhile, I was wanting to focus on React, but actually in the groups later on that I got involved with, the majority of people in the group were more comfortable with Vue. So I actually spent more time working with Vue uh, than React, which I was kind of hoping I would. Um, so yeah, I guess what am I saying? Yeah, I guess the hands-offness is kind of a good thing, but I think for me, in my case, it was kind of a negative thing because yeah, it is kind of like a very much figure it out on your own kind of thing. Uh, again, which I'm not criticizing that in itself, but like if I'm paying for a program, I was hoping for like more directed, um, I guess, instruction. And I think that's because I come from a background or some kind of mindset about schools and institutions where it's like, I just kind of accepted this idea that you know, you kind of go into the school box and they tell you what to do and you come out and you're magically this thing uh, that you went into school to do. But uh, I think we can all say that that's not really how things work. And that was probably a huge mindset or perception mistake, not even a mistake, just um, it wasn't very helpful for me going into the program. I, I think uh, I get what you're saying. Do you mind if I sum it real quick? Please do. Thanks. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, like I said, I reviewed a lot of coding boot camps, and sometimes coding boot camps can have a little bit more of an open style, especially with that second half. Now, I can tell you right now, 12 weeks to learn React and Vue, and it sounds like you were learning API backend. Th that's crunched. Like, that's a lot of learning. I can see the you shaking your head, and I'm telling you, like, I'm... I'm not the most intelligent person. I'm an intelligent person, but like a lot, of, I'm just honestly an average person that put a lot of work into coding. That's how I became a developer, right? It takes time for things to like really sink in for most people. And so to go through, um, to go through this program and learn like React is tough alone. Like Vue's a simpler version, right? In my opinion, React is, it's, it's hard and like, there are so many people, so many aspiring developers that I'd talk to that would kind of go through a lot of React content with coding boot camps, but a lot of coding boot camps kind of brush over it or they try to expand that knowledge too much. They want to teach Angular, they want to teach Vue, and they're trying to crunch it in this like 12 weeks. And it's like, then when I really test the React knowledge, they don't know a lot. They really don't. They don't know what's happening under the hood when bugs happen. Um, you know, even like this idea of like asynchronous state and stuff like that, like sometimes changes would happen. They didn't really understand even asynchronous behavior. They didn't really like understand JavaScript fundamentals well to understand that's what state's doing. It's not a synchronous thing. And that alone can cause bugs and like trip you up when you're learning React. Um, so yeah, shoving Vue into that and then saying like you can either do React or Vue um, when it sounds like that knowledge was spread thin already. Um, I don't know. It, it feels like maybe they would benefit from tightening that up a little bit and becoming more focused. Um, and yeah. Uh, that's kind of like the paradox of it all is you're paying like a lot of money to do this 12 week program when even, you know, the instructors or at least one of the instructors made the comments like, yeah, we should, we, we should be spending way more time on this, but, but we got to get through it. We got to move on to the next thing. Um, you know, I believe anyone can learn this stuff. You know, like you said, you put in the time and the work. And interestingly enough, you know, the thing people probably need most when learning this stuff is time. Yet you are, you know, by the nature of a boot camp, you're paying a lot of money to not have a lot of time. And that's not including all of the other things that Code Chrysalis has you doing outside of coding um, as part of their program. So I, I guess that's like one critique i'd have i hope i'm not coming across as like just crapping on the program or anything because no. well, i think um, you've cushioned it more than most of my guests cushion it to be honest oh, okay <laughs> you're fine but um what what do you yeah, guys think so of that sorry. right fine. um i mean me i, I guess i had a, a different view me it's really the the culture of cold crystals that really struck me negatively like for me all that like uh, emotional support like i felt it's a very american culture 
like boot camp in Japan. And as a non-American, I felt kind of odd. Like, why is it like this type of thing? So it, for me, all of this felt just weird. Like people being like, I don't know, offended easily. And like a, a teacher make, making a joke then on me and then pulling me in a room and, and apologizing. Like, I just didn't understand why I was so confused. I'm like, no, nah, it's okay. It's a joke. I get it. Like, it's fine. <laughs> like it, it was just kind of a weird experiment for me to, to have this like microcosm of American culture in Japan. Um, but uh, for me, programmers, I mean, I, I do agree that, but in the end, even if we spend two weeks on React, it's not enough. So that's why I understand might as well just be exposed to both and then on your own, more look into it if you're interested. Because in the end, you'll learn more in your first month of job than the three months of the boot camp, I think. So that's what I felt. So um, yeah, the boot camp, it's a way to like kind of solidify certain skills. And then you'll be able to like do coding challenges, let's say. And, but the essential of your like basic learning, I think you'll do more on the job, but uh, yeah, the curriculum for me, I thought it was fine. It was a little all over the place. Like there's even a week that they're like, pick a tech and do whatever. So you can pick like a new language and learn it and do an app with it. And that was f fun, but not very useful. Like, like what, like I, I'm taking, I don't know, C++ for a week. What can you do with C++ in a week? Right. So there's not like it's, and it's like, really, you can do whatever you want. So that was fun, like, but also just not so useful in the grand scheme of things. Uh, one of the big thing though, that wasn't mentioned. And for me, maybe was a big plus was after the program, they have like a career support system. Hold yes, up. Yes. Like that. We'll, oh, we'll talk about that. I, no, no, you're fine. Um, because I want to dig more into that, but that's good to, good to hear. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can dig into it later. Okay. So for me, the program itself was fine. Uh, my cohort, we were 17. It was a mix of Japanese and English uh, students. So uh, that was fine for me, but maybe challenging for others because not everyone spoke English or Japanese. But uh, in the end, yeah, I didn't have the problem because me, I'm a very bossy person. So when I came in my team to do my final project, we used the tech stack that I wanted. So I was lucky that they let me do what I wanted. But uh, yeah, I can see why if you're in a team that everyone wants to use something different, it's a little uh, troublesome. But uh, in the end, I don't know. In general, it was positive, like curriculum wise and what we made. And it's more the... The, I call it the, the fluff, the fluff around it. That was a little like hit and miss for me. And most of my uh, non-American uh, classmates. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Um, what are your thoughts, Hikimi? It was amazing for me. So it's like 12 weeks, 12, 12 weeks program. And uh, I think after five weeks or six weeks, they have a midterm assessment. So I struggled a lot. I, I, I was the most struggled person in the cohort. And uh, after five, so after I took the midterm assessment and I failed. <laughs> and uh, because I struggled a lot, I studied a lot, but so many things I have to run. So Code Chrysalis moved me to the next cohort, so I studied it again. Then I understand better, and I took the midterm assessment again, the next cohort, and I passed, and I, I could graduate. I think it's amazing, and uh, the school system is good. Um, right now, I'm uh, not using React or Vue. I use Django framework and uh, Python, no JavaScript at all. But still, uh, I use uh, every, I, for my work, I use all uh, knowledge from Code Chrysalis. I'm still running. Actually, I forgot how to use uh, React and Vue. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let me think. So, <laughs> okay. I, first of all, I like um, Michael. I like that you and Francis like like the opposite parts. Um, that is really interesting. Yeah. And I, I do agree with Francis about like um, like I see what he means about the the I guess microcosm of American culture because we had a lot of people from different countries in my cohort as well, and like you know in in our discord chat room like hearing their reactions to things that would be said and done uh in the um in classes or whatever was like really interesting as like it, it it was really like refreshing actually but um uh yeah yeah that's a good point to make it is kind of like this weird um i don't know i guess i'll use the word progressive it's like it's a very like progressive chunk of like I don't know, maybe Silicon Valley high tech culture in Japan. I guess I never thought about it at first, but it is a very like Americanized viewpoint. And that's, um, God, we could get into like uh, so much depth about um, just Silicon Valley culture being introduced, right? Um, and some people love it, some people hate it. It just that's the fact of it and so there is this i i am under this is my personal opinion i'm under the boat that um there is a lot of sensitivity in the tech culture and um i think that we need to yeah sometimes like the fact that your instructor made a joke um and like pulled you aside to apologize i i feel like everyone's so afraid to like say the wrong thing and just like completely like demolish a relationship and you have to understand like human relationships are stronger than that like they probably already screened everyone out right they probably already wanted friendly people in not people that are just like completely trashing others and like putting others down right and so you go into a program like this it's like it's okay to kind of let people step on each other's toes a little bit and figure it out and and kind of talk through it and figure out the personality before like um before you like jump to conclusions on like you completely offended them or like you i don't know you're just oblivious to i don't know like sometimes relationships and tech need to have some longevity and you figure out the other person um and if you want to be cautious you know just be incredibly kind and um just don't push boundaries right away but like there is this notion of kind of like sensitivity and like in my developer positions too some were a little bit more open and honest and candid it's like we just told each other what we thought we didn't get offended and we built strong relationships from that like and we you know we told jokes and everything and if we crossed a boundary you know we apologize if we offended someone but sometimes i see like people like really tiptoeing in culture and like really tiptoeing no one builds strong relationships it, like it's all kind of like you're just trying to say the right things and so is scared to offend people it's like i see a lot of uh, people just like not really having real conversations with each other and sometimes that like silicon valley um i mean like i said i could do an entire episode about that but what i'm trying to say is um that progressive culture and tech it, it is kind of weird and i do i think what i find really weird about it is this coding boot camp in japan i'm not totally fine with american culture like really being injected into japan that strongly and i've heard stories like that um and i wonder i don't it kind of makes me wonder like what the culture is in like web development as a software engineer in japan has that been americanized has silicon valley like really injected that culture in japan maybe that's a topic of its own but um i don't know i'm just i'm thinking through this that's that's just an interesting point that you brought out so maybe some people would enjoy it maybe some people wouldn't yeah <laughs> any any thoughts about that because I, I think it's a really interesting part that you guys brought up if my 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 mm. The, the knee-jerk cynical side of me says it's very good for marketing and um you know i guess just um I, I think there's a marketing benefit but i also do think that you know the the people really do want to care about people and they really are um accommodating and understanding um and yeah 
I guess that's what I'll say about that. I'm, I'm kind of curious about like what Yukimi thinks, because my understanding was, you know, when you're, when you're in a cohort, so let's mm-hmm. say a cohort lasts like 12 weeks. So when you come in, when you start your cohort, the mm-hmm. cohort before you is like starting their like seventh week, they're already halfway through. So there's this kind of overlap between cohorts at any given time. And I remember when I came into my cohort, the cohort before me was like halfway through it was much smaller and it, you know, like Francis's cohort was a mix of Japanese and English. Um, But I remember seeing that the Japanese students had a Japanese teacher and they received their instruction in Japanese. And so I'm curious, like from Yukimi's point of view, Mm -hmm. like were you taught from a Japanese instructor and like within the Japanese Mm -hmm. classes and the students, was that Mm -hmm. more of like, did you feel like the culture and the instruction style was more Japanese or did you feel like the I took the English Americans? Oh, okay, and, right. Yeah, there are no Japanese class up to I see. my yeah, when I took the class. So mm. was was there not like a Japanese teacher on staff at the time or Actually, yeah, there are Japanese teachers but uh, mm. no Japanese class. It was only English. Okay. Cohort. Well, well, me, my, my classmates were in the Japanese cohort because at the end, right, the projects were all mixed in. So me, I was able to talk to the Japanese only students. And to my understanding, it's pretty much a copy paste of what it is. Mm. Uh, like we were always finishing pretty much at the same time for lessons. Uh, I mean, it's again, it's just a little more like it's a little harder when you're in projects with some students that only speak English or only speak Japanese. But beside this, it really feels like it's the same. Uh, For me, at my time, both of the teachers were pretty solid. Uh, So I was pretty like happy. I think one better than the other, but anyway, let's not do competitions. But uh, uh, so I feel that, um, yeah. But I feel the English side will get a little more support because I think a lot of the staff will like speak only English, some of them, some only Japanese, but like the important, like the CEO is English only and things like this. So things like this, but yeah, I felt it was fair and the same. I didn't feel like they learned more or less. So yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, actually expand on that. Um, Yukimi and Michael, what do you think of your instructors? Um. I think they are good, um, but <clears throat> I took two cohorts. So the first cohort, my instructor lives in so far away. It's she is not in Tokyo. He lives in some island near South Korea, but he is still in Japan. So he never come to school. So we had a hundred percent remote environment so that makes for me running totally new things and something difficult to subject totally remote was so difficult for me so i think it was part of the reason i struggled a lot so yeah the first teacher was not good for me but uh, the second teacher he comes to school every day so it was easy to ask him question chatting him okay that makes sense mm. okay sounds like in person was a better experience yeah, for you. yes 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 but uh, you know this is a pandemic time so nobody can force instructor to come to school every day okay how about you michael yeah, so my cohort, we had 17 students and we had three different teachers. And um, there was very clearly like uh, the best teacher and then maybe like a middle tier teacher and then like a lower tier. Oh, gosh, I, I don't want to say anything mean or anything, but like, for example, I guess the lead teacher, I'll say, um, interestingly enough, was a self taught developer who had been doing it for who had been studying web development for i think like eight nine 
almost 10 years. So he'd been around and he was very like confident and, you know, everyone felt confidence in him. And then, um, so yeah, I noticed, I, I was thinking about this the other day, like sometimes I feel like, wouldn't it have been nice if maybe I had been in like some kind of smaller group with like a single teacher so that everyone could get more focused attention. And then I was thinking about, well, you know, they could have done that with a group of 17 students and they kind of did. It was like, there was, I think it was like six, six and five were like these six students, this, you were assigned to this person as your mentor and you had this person as your mentor and you had this person as your mentor. Uh, the group I was in, I would say was with the, what I would call the mid tier teacher. But during lectures, all three teachers would kind of take turns teaching the lesson. And, um, you know, I was, I was wondering, like, well, why they had us all in, in one big group taking instruction from the three different teachers instead of breaking us down like they had into the smaller groups and having us receive instruction only from that one teacher. Um, and I guess thinking on it now, I think it's because the quality of the teachers was different. Like if you did split up the whole class into groups, this group that might get assigned the low, t low tier teacher to receive only instruction from them um, would not have benefited as much as, you know, the group that got assigned to the, the lead teacher, I'll say. And so basically... Um, I guess the best thing they could have done is like try and distribute all of the teachers teachings as equally as they could among all the students and have everybody uh, take the instruction together. Um, but yeah, so I guess there was like a competence difference between the teachers, which I, I think is, you know, natural in any case, you know, if you have someone who's been doing it for a long time, they're just going to be more experienced and know things. Um, and, you know, they would deliver the lecture in the morning. And then usually, you know, you're sent off to do your assignment for the day or whatever. And uh, yeah, if you have trouble, there's like a Slack channel and you can ask questions. Um, but yeah, I feel like teachers were mostly hands off. Like if you, if you requested like personal assistance or something, you could get it. But I usually didn't do that. And I, didn't have much like one-on-one -on -one instruction from a teacher. It was just kind of like I was in the pool with everybody else during the lectures and we would get a certain quality of teaching on the lecture, depending on which one of the teachers was teaching it. Um, and there'd also be like a demonstration of the concept that they were going over. Like if, if we were learning APIs, you know, they'd, you'd watch like a, a video and then there would be like a code demonstration, but, uh, there were many times in my cohort where even the instructor led code demonstration wouldn't even get finished because other students would ask questions. And so it kind of get derailed into this QA session. And then, you know, because time, 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 um, Hey, we just got to get on the assignment. Um, I'll post the code over here. If you have questions you can ask, but, um, you know, I feel like, mm, yeah, I think the instructors were good, but uh, again, in my case, in my cohort, uh, maybe time management and management of how the classes were run could have been a little better, or maybe a little more uniform and tight between all of the teachers. Uh, because, you know, the thing I'm craving most is that directed instruction from a teacher, a professional, someone who is supposed to be my mentor. But a lot of times that felt like it got cut short or shortchanged. Um, that's my long answer to your short question. Yeah. Could, could I chime in uh, to expand a little more on Go for yeah. it. Uh, me? I, I agree everything you said, but actually it's maybe something a little more outside of this. It's one of the big red flags I feel of that I heard from booth camps is booth camps that hire their old students as teachers. <laughs> and that was one thing that I was looking and I hope that, it wasn't like this in Code Chrysalis. And when I started to like check different boot camps, I asked, oh, how about the teachers? Are they like experience? Like, the, do they have experience in the work field? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. And big surprise, I come in and they're all ex-students. 
like the, I know who you're talking uh, about, Michael and him. He joined in after my cohort. So all of my teachers were old students. So mm -hmm. this is kind of wow. pretty bad. And the mid tier teachers are all ex students. Uh, I was lucky. One of the ex students was amazing. So he was a great mentor and student. I mean, I've asked my company to hire him and he works with me now. So that's how much I, he left a good impression on me. So, um, but none of them had actual experience. They were just like hungry to learn and they were able to share that passion with us. But it would have been nice for my cohort because me, it's been a year, exactly a year that I did finish Code Chrysalis. So I didn't have any of those like, like how do you say hardened uh like ba battle hardened like developer that have been doing it for 10 years so uh that was definitely a big red flag that kind of made me doubt oh crap i wasted that much money i'm gonna just learn from people who never worked in the field but it didn't work out this way i stayed positive in the end but in the end you know you're always freaking out because you spend so much money so you want to make sure you get uh yeah but but the thing is that the teachers do change a lot like the two mm -hmm. of the teachers that were teaching me are not even working there and it's been a year only anymore so that's also kind of what do you think yeah. that is um salary role yeah salary mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. mid mid tier but for me both of my teachers they were like uh, very hungry to learn more and I think they, before they were like teacher engineers. So they were also like helping developing their websites and their programs and stuff. But I think they switched to no code. So they're just using like uh, HubSpot CMS to do everything. So because of this, I think it turned the two of them down and they started looking elsewhere. And that's when I grabbed my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. That's really interesting. Let me think. So big advocate for teachers having experience in the industry. It makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, they also like teaching is a skill in itself where you need to give your software engineers time to like really pick that up. And it can help to have gone through the previous curriculum. I would argue, and I've seen this software engineering experience, um, even if you have to pull someone outside of the coding boot camp that wasn't an alumni, usually ends up benefiting that instructor and the students more. Um, so it's like, I don't know, like you can you can be a good enough teacher where that experience won't hurt, that lack of experience won't hurt you much. But usually, good strong quality instruction from coding boot camps comes from software engineers that have experience. You can, mm -hmm. in my opinion, like it can you can give feedback and people generally seem to be able to pick up teaching pretty well soft skills sometimes and being able to deliver feedback effectively time management like they're all like skills and that's another thing time management in itself that's that's really important and that's kind of hard to teach sometimes a lot of people bring bad time management skills to their curriculum and teaching and that that can affect the whole you know curriculum well not the curriculum but like the teaching the courses the lessons a lot more than you think and um, that's where I'd argue that open-ended Q&A that I kept turning into, I know a lot of people would be frustrated with that. Um, so I, I can empathize with that. So again, like that's something maybe they can work on. Work on that time management, I would argue. It's a really good thing to really focus in and then maybe uh, answer questions afterwards. Like you have to kind of, most coding boot camps will dedicate time afterwards. They might answer a few questions, but if it's getting off the rails, it's like, hey, you know, we got to finish this. Let's, we have time dedicated to answer it afterwards. But it that goes into like, well, honestly, 12 weeks, they're trying to cram a lot. I don't even know how they're going to dedicate that time. It feels like they're, I don't know. It feels like they're really trying to teach a lot. So I'm just thinking through this. Um, I feel like I have a good good sense of your experiences. I really do. And I could elaborate a lot more, but I want to dive into specifically career services. Francis, I promised you we'd bring it back up. Career services is really important. And it's, you know, like you're learning coding, you're learning, so you're growing as a software engineer, and you're also becoming really good at the job search. It's an entirely separate skill. 
it really helps to have a lot of support with that. Um, and it's it's hard. A lot of people struggle with that. So let's talk about career services. What do you think about it? I'll start, I guess. So, um, me, career support was one of the things that maybe sold me the boot camp because me, I really wanted to make that career switch. It was very important to me. So I went guns blazing. I'm going to get rejected 5 million times. I don't care. I'm going to do it. And the, the program director that was with me, like the one that supported the career support director, she was so supportive and basically she's give she'll give you as much support as you ask her so if i message her every day she'll reply to me every day if we're just joining once a week our like meeting to like keep track of what's going on it's going to be once a week so it's really you can get as much as you ask them to give you and that was great uh, for me, the job hunting process was, of course, grueling and painful like everyone, but I had her, I had other people of my cohort that I got a lot of support from, and I got rejected so many times. And maybe that's something that people want to hear. I got rejected so many times. I got a lot of interviews. Uh, you, you screw them up. Some interviews, you do them. You know you can't get the job, but you want to have the interview practice, and it's okay. I think it's part of the fun. Um, and yeah, the career support for me was really good. Um, and the person that, uh, provided it to me is still like, for me, someone that really helped me into my, uh, whole job search process. So, uh, yeah, I'm curious to hear the other two. What, what did you experience with this? Very good. Actually. Yeah. I agree with you. We, I had a, like a 30 minutes. 30 minutes advice, advice time per week with uh, the counselor. And uh, so every week she advised me, okay, what should I do this week? And uh, I, I, followed, I, I followed her advice and uh, I apply, apply, apply job. And I got some uh, uh, interviews. Then I think the most favorite things about career advisor at Code Creator is well, salary negotiation. For me, it's so difficult to demand. The, I want to have a lot of money. Of course, everybody likes money, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to get this much money, but it's so difficult to do that. So I think, uh, yeah. My advisor gave me really good advice for salary negotiation. And during uh, looking for a job, I communicate with her every day with Slack. That also helped me to find a job. In Japan, is salary negotiation frowned upon? I think it uh, depends on company. Okay. All right, I was just curious. Cool. Mm -hmm. How about you? What's your opinion on career services? Yeah, no, I totally agree with everything uh, Francis and Yukimi said. Like looking back on it now, all right, probably the whole point of doing any of this code chrysalis, any boot camp, like going on this endeavor, the key is getting a job. Like forget everything else. That's the point. Are you getting a job? Are you not getting a job? And like looking back at it, everything during the 12 weeks, all the curriculum, all of this, all the projects, all of that um, almost seems, I don't want to quite fully say like unimportant, but compared to like the, the critical element of job support at the very end, when it's like, all right, it's all over. Now it's like boots on the ground, go, 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 get it. Um, the support was amazing. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I don't know who everyone had on support. Their support team isn't that huge. I think right now they have like two people on the support team, but, uh, yeah, my support advisor was great, extremely positive and encouraging. And, um, yeah, 
I guess another thing to mention too is that the boot camp does take into account like your background and your skills. You know, so for example, in Japan, if you have like maybe、um, a high Japanese language skill or certification,、uh, and a Japanese company comes to Code Chrysalis and they're like, "Hey, we're looking for a graduate from your school. Do you have anyone you know we might be interested in?"、Uh, you know, they'll tap you on the shoulder. They're like, "Hey." You know, you're studying robotics. There's this robotics company looking for someone. Would you be interested in arranging an interview? This kind of a thing. So support also does that. They'll look at your personal strengths and this kind of thing. And if a company happens to come along that might be a good fit for you, they'll try and facilitate a connection there.、Um, yeah, Code Chrysalis is very much. I don't know. Almost like.、Um, It kind of builds up. It gets this excitement going, and you're getting to the end of the program, and it's very much like a, a strike while the iron is hot. It's like, all right, you're graduated, job hunt, go. I want like 40 applications out this week, and we're going to keep it up. We're going to keep on track. And、um, once that handoff happens between the time you graduate and then the time when you're in the Mad Max world of the job hunt. <laughs> I don't know. Just Mad Max pops in my head because it just feels like this endless apocalypse of like maybe you'll find a drink of water somewhere <laughs> or something.、It's、like you know, you just got to get that first drink of water. Like the support system that they have in place is excellent for just keeping you going as long as you want to go. Like they're they're there for you, and even after you get a first job, like you can still come back to Code Chrysalis for like you know help with negotiations, you know for example, and things like that.、Um, so yeah, like I've nothing but positive things to say about the support team. During the last part of the program, there is kind of like、um, there are sessions that talk about the job hunt, and you write your CV and your resume, and they have it checked.、Uh, I don't know how particular this is to my situation, but the the people in the support program come from an HR background, not necessarily a software background. So they have a lot of experience with resumes, and they will give you advice based on their experience. But during my support phase,、um, my I guess support counselor, whoever you want, however you want to call them. Uh, asked if I wanted to kind of have like a one-on-one session with one of the people who wrote the curriculum for Code Chrysalis way back when it first started, and I said, "Yeah, I'd love that."、Um, and so he looked at my resume, and we had this meeting. And you know, this guy is coming from a software background. I think he might have been like a formal Google developer or something, but he helped write the whole curriculum for the whole boot camp that they're using now. And some of the advice he gave me about my resume was actually some of the points were actually completely opposite to what you know the HR support person had told me. So,、um, not to say that you can't trust the HR support people in Code Chrysalis, but understand that like there is people are coming at your resume from different viewpoints, you know. And I say, you know, if you can, well, you will get the HR advice, but if you can. Shop your resume to maybe a software developer or a professional in the industry. Like, try and get as many viewpoints as you can on your resume to try and polish it up that much more. It's good feedback. I like that.、Um, and I, I would even say with my coding boot camp, I hear that story with other coding boot camps.、Um, sometimes, no, the person reviewing your resume, they weren't a software engineer, and it does help to get those multiple perspectives. Hundred percent agree with that.、Um, Okay, let's wrap it up with this final thing.、Um, Yukimi, we'll start with you. What is one thing you would、mm. want the program to improve with? Constructive feedback.、Mm. Um, let me think about that. Can you skip to someone? Okay, sure. Who else? Um, I guess、um, for for me, the thing I felt like I was really craving, and the thing that I、um, missed out on was like maybe more one on one time with an instructor, going over maybe some kind of code review, even if it's just like thirty、mm. minutes or something, like once a week or even once every two weeks. Now, in all fairness. 
code chrysalis does let you know that like at any time you can request to be audited on your performance so far but it has to come from you and it's a thing that you set off on the side so there there is that so maybe i'm not being completely fair in my critique but um and again when you have as many students as like up to 17 you know that could be a logistics problem again there's zero time. There's just not enough time really to give most of the stuff they're already doing the justice it needs. Um, but yeah, like maybe something that was more structured, you know, like in the support, like, I think it's mandatory. Like you have to meet every week with your advisor, like maybe something like that on the code review side of things while you're actually going through the curriculum. Uh, if anything, like for me, that would have helped boost my own confidence in myself. Um, which I think was my biggest problem, I guess, before and even after the boot camp was like, I didn't, I had zero confidence in my skills at the time. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's good feedback. Um, for me, the feedback would be, I guess, um, just. I guess trying to get instructors like it's okay that they did the booth camp but they would have need to be on the job market then you try to bring them back type of thing that looks nice and one of the thing and i guess it's so personal but it's try to like me the, the fact that they only have positive like reviews was a very big downside for me like for me when everything is five stars there's something going wrong like i do not trust a five star nothing is really five star nothing is perfect so that's why when i see five star i thought like i i think they need to let people give just okay like me i don't think it was terrible i don't think it was the best it's still a good like seven out of ten like if you want to be a dev do it but it's not like a mind-blowing experience that will change everything no but it's good it's solid so I feel they're not transparent enough and they should just be proud of being honest. Like they don't, they won't put my review because I did give a review uh, of, the, of that to my, uh, the, the support team and they will never put it because me, it's like 3.5 out of 3.5 stars. So it's not the perfect score, best thing ever. It's more like a genuine critique. And I think a lot of people, it will turn them off if, it's the same as if you see like a bunch of product comments it's like best thing ever but you don't see like anything else it's kind of fishy i don't know maybe i'm too negative but i thought they should just let people give whatever their opinion and embrace the negativity and the positivity to then improve on themselves i like i like how everyone is tiptoeing about like being too negative like <laughs> My podcast is super critical. You got to watch some other episodes. Um, all of all of you, all this feedback is helpful. You have all been very kind and nice to the program. I promise you. But yes, um, it's dishonest. That's exactly what it is. It's not transparent. And why do you think I have a podcast that's growing around this? It's like this is like my main thing about doing these coding boot camp reviews. It's like people, students, do not feel like they're being delivered an honest, transparent representation of the program. And it is okay to even have like a two star review. That's okay. Like the program isn't going to be perfect for anyone, right? Or everyone. And so, yeah, I. Yeah, five star reviews, they don't exist. Uh, I would even argue one star reviews are probably too emotional and they don't exist. And so um, I would take that into consideration. But um, yeah, that's good feedback. How about you, Kimi? I know you've been, I actually want to challenge you because you've said nothing but positive things. So have you come <laughs> up with something? Yes, yes, yes. One thing I want to say to fix it is um, called the Chrysalis, they, people, uh, both instructor and the student can choose uh, being on site or remote and uh, because of this uh, situation many people uh, choose remote but i think it's okay to choose remote but uh, i think uh, it's better to run on site situation so i wanted to code chrysalis encourage people to come on site and i think oh sorry go ahead 
Oh, yeah, go, yeah, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. It's like the quality of education, the experience is less with remote. It just almost yeah. always is. And, uh, you know, it's like a lot of people are so afraid to say it. It's like I think a lot of people are just ready to connect with others again. A lot of people are ready to go in person. They're, you're paying a lot of money this program you're paying a lot of money and so at the very least they should be um, hopefully they're at least uh dumping the price down you shouldn't be paying nearly as much if you're remote that's my opinion do they do that no no okay oh. so um yeah i 100 percent agree with you i think that's really good feedback um cool so i was trying to get you out early um but eh? kind of early cool i think we can wrap up here it's all really good feedback i think this is going to be a lot of helpful or very helpful for people did you want to um, say something like yeah that? yeah before uh before we wrap this up um I, i'd like to talk about maybe alternatives to people like if if you're thinking about not doing a boot camp or or i guess like in hindsight like if i could do it all over again you know because i think you know francis and yukimi i guess you both succeeded and that you you pushed through and you got a job but whereas me i wonder like if i had done things a little differently if i might be in a different place now like if i might actually have succeeded in getting a job um and so like when i was looking up or studying you know how do people get into software engineering in my mind and again this is all on me but in my mind i kind of had it down to two things you're either completely self-taught or you go to a boot camp and that kind of helps you know give you a foothold in but i think maybe a third more useful alternative that people should consider is that if you're already in the mindset that you're going to pull the trigger on spending a ton of money and sacrificing the time time is another thing people i don't think uh take into consideration enough like think about the time you have to spend to save up that money plus the three months of the boot camp plus the however long three six sometimes even nine months like there are graduates who have not gotten a job until like nine months after they graduated so from a time perspective it's a huge investment you know and you're converting that to money you know how are you going to live and eat and survive during the job hunt too um so if you already have it set in your mind that you're going to pull the trigger on spending all this money maybe consider like instead of the boot camp for one thing and this is something that i think would have benefited myself uh is that i think not just me but i think a lot of people probably have like confidence issues or maybe low self-esteem issues or maybe a lot of just negative mental baggage that doesn't that isn't going to help them when you get into the boot camp um like hearing francis talk i feel like in some ways he might be the opposite of me like you seem like a very like go-getter like you said you're a bossy person and you're like i'm gonna do this and i think if you're the kind of person that has that kind of mindset i think um going through code chrysalis you can succeed you can push through i think the people that do succeed in code chrysalis that has a lot to do with it it's the person that succeeds the the program doesn't necessarily teach you anything that you can't learn anywhere else for free that's another thing in the marketing i want to touch on a lot of times you'll see this phrase will teach you how to learn um to me like all that boiled down to was read the documentation and google it on your own like there is there was never this separate lecture where it's like we're going to teach you the secret of how to learn like there's none of that it's not all it is is just read the documentation primary sources and find your answers to your questions on your own i think that was kind of bs but uh yeah like if you're the kind of go-getter positive person and you're determined you're going to do this i think you know code chrysalis can really help you along you'll probably be fine on the other hand, if you are maybe like a pessimistic person, if you have low self-esteem, if you struggle a lot with negative self-talk, like if it's something that feels like a wall inside of your mind and your heart that just seems to like stop you all the time, you know, maybe if you're if you suspect you might be suffering from depression or whatever, instead of spending all this money on a boot camp, maybe so code chrysalis costs like a little over 1.3 million yen which translates to a little under twelve thousand dollars let's say twelve thousand dollars instead of spending twelve thousand dollars on this boot camp program which you know education wise 
at best, you know, depending on what kind of teacher you're going to get in the teacher lottery, instead of spending $12,000 on that and three months of your life, maybe take a portion of that money. Again, just for illustration's sake, let's cut it in half. What if you spent $6,000 investing in getting whatever help you think you need? Maybe you need to go to counseling sessions. Maybe you need to go to therapy sessions. Maybe you need to buy some books on mindfulness or meditation or whatever, like whatever healing you think you might need to get your mind into a healthier place to tackle on the huge task of learning a new skill and transitioning into a new career. Maybe invest half of this boot camp money into that, into your into yourself. Cause I think at the end of the day, that's that's really going to make or break people. It's like your own mental or spiritual, emotional, whatever makeup you have at the time. And then maybe take the other half of that money and straight up look for mentors, like someone that you pay one-on-one, you know, just once a week even to maybe guide you along, give you a task like, Hey, by next week, do this and we'll go over your code. And then, Oh, you know, maybe instead of this, do this. Um, I think that would be way, way more effective. Even if you have to pay that mentor, like two, three, I don't know, $400 for one session compared to like just dumping $12,000 into a boot camp where it just kind of feels like you're in this firing line and they just fire a shotgun at all of you. And like, eh, maybe something will stick, maybe something won't. I think that might be like a more effective alternative. In short, I would suggest, you know, if you're on the fence about the boot camp thing, do some deep, serious self-reflection um, and invest some of that money into helping yourself, like healing yourself. And then the other into a mentor, like someone who is just for you one-on-one. Um, because yeah, I think even for $6,000, at $300 for once a week for a mentor, you'll probably get way, way more quality instruction and learning and confidence than what a boot camp can probably offer you. Um, and, you know, even a mentor can probably just as well give you like job support and advice, especially if there's someone who's been in the industry and knows what they're talking about. Uh, I kind of had that revelation during my support. Uh, process when I had that one-on-one meeting with the former, I think he might've been a former Google developer. It's like that one hour I spent with that guy, just the way we talked about things and the clear, concise advice he gave about my projects, my GitHub. I was like, holy crap. If I had given this guy $13,000 or $12,000, completely different. So consider that alternative as well. You know, you can do this, you can do this all free, um, you know, self-taught, all this stuff is for free on the internet. Code Chrysalis has no secret that they're going to teach you just because you bought into it. There's nothing like that. Um, or, you know, yeah, do a boot camp. There's tons of benefits there. You know, the, the people, the social benefits, the networking, um, but also this third alternative. If you're already ready to pull the trigger on this, you know, why not just think of different ways to use $12,000 or however much money you're thinking of spending on a boot camp, and seriously like reflect on yourself and maybe focus it more on yourself instead of giving it to an institution, expecting them to somehow magically turn you into this thing that you're, you think you want to become. Sorry, I took up a lot of time with that, but I, that was something I really wanted to, it's been on my mind a lot. Let's, the, um, the, real quick, sorry. Francis, then we got to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, quick, quick, quick. So, uh, I completely agree with you. I have different perspectives. So I agree with you on the fact that, uh, yeah, it's good to, uh, like, if you're a very negative person, it'll be super hard for you to find a job. Mm-hmm. And people in my cohort that are negative and don't think that they're good enough, they still are job hunting or stop the job hunt because it's so hard. Completely agree. And the other part is, for me, classroom environment is the best environment to learn. I like to be in competition with others. So uh, I feel uh, a one-on-one with a mentor would bring a very little to some people like me. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. think the classroom, env- I, I, I completely see that it's good for you and uh, for me i think castle environment is great because it's a little more structured and also there's this like battle of who can do better than the others that Mm -hmm. i love but it's not for everyone but that's it sorry don (laughs) all good yeah i'm just trying to 
be conscientious of everyone's time. But it, I mean, it's a good conversation. Seriously, uh, Michael, I appreciate you ex expanding on that. I've a uh, real quick, I have a lot of self-taught developers that watch my videos more than originally than what I started. A lot of people feel like a coding bootcamp is the only solution nowadays, right? And I think it's important to recognize it's like, that's why I started maybe um, three months ago, four months ago, I started pushing self-taught path, try it out first and kind of like see where you lack. Like, do you have time management problems? Do you have, uh, do you not have confidence problems? Are you, um, a perfectionist are you and like being able to self-assess a lot of that can help you get specific help in those areas right and we can go into tons of like bad habits that a lot of people come into like we're all human right none of us are perfect all of us have bad habits and i would argue assessing some of those bad habits before you even go into a coding boot camp maybe you could address some of those habits and that coding boot camp isn't a necessity anymore right so i think that self-analysis is really important but to give you guys your time back, um, let's go ahead and jump into our outros. Uh, so, Yukimi, if people wanted to reach out to you, maybe ask you like a question about the coding boot camp, where could they reach you? Where? Where? Yeah, on social media. Like, if they wanted to ask additional questions, where could they reach you? Oh, um, to me? Yeah, like, uh, do you have a LinkedIn uh, profile? Uh, yeah, do you want me to just. I have a LinkedIn. I have a LinkedIn. Sorry, I, maybe I misunderstood your question. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, okay. Uh, Michael. Yeah. And I'll link your LinkedIn below. I'll link everyone's in the description. Um, Michael, where can people reach you and anything else you want to shout out? Uh, yeah. Same thing. Um, LinkedIn. Michael Metcalf. Cool. I'm here all week. All right. How about you, Francis? Me? Uh, it's going to be first LinkedIn, Francis Godro and uh, MySpace, Skaterboy86. So uh, whichever is good. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you coming out. Like I said, stick around just for a couple minutes. Um, but yeah, uh, let let me know in the comments. I think that was like a, a good ending, especially what Michael and Francis brought up. Um, because like a lot of people are deciding even if a coding boot camp is right for them, let alone trying to figure out the right coding boot camp. So if you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments. But yeah, Kimi, Michael, Francis, thanks so much for coming on. We